Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. It's a real honor for, for Rand and I to be in here uh, in the Rare Book Room at The Strand. This is an amazing bookstore and I really appreciate Nancy for inviting us and putting together this wonderful event for us. And I also really have enjoyed getting to know you and appreciate our friendship in the Senate Spouses Group. I believe there is incredible power in friendship, especially that between women. In my new book, True and Constant Friends, I write about my 32-year friendship with six women that I met the very first week of my freshman year in college. Since we graduated in 1985, we have faithfully reunited almost every year despite the fact that we're scattered all over the country. The book is about the sustaining force of friendship in our lives, but it's also about the women who came before us, our mothers and grandmothers, the first and most powerful sources of love and inspiration in all of our lives. The centerpiece of my book is the story of my own beloved grandmother, Julia O'Toole, who came to this country from Ireland in 1929. She was only 19 years old and she sailed all alone. To me, my grandmother's humble story epitomizes the American dream and the guiding principles that have made this the greatest country on earth. My brave grandmother, still just a teenager, sailed across the Atlantic alone with just a small bit of money sewn into her clothes. She fled extreme poverty in Ireland and she came to America with just one hope, to find work so that she could send money home to her family in Ireland. She had a distant aunt named Nora who had worked as a laundress in New York City for years and she saved for three years to buy my grandmother a third class ticket on the Adriatic. A ship carrying hundreds and hundreds of Irish immigrants who were sailing to America with just one dream and the desire to work hard. When I was a young girl, I loved to listen to my grandmother's stories which were told in her musical Irish brogue. She was a natural storyteller, and honestly a bit of an exaggerator, as all good storytellers are. But despite the hardships in her life, Julia was an incredibly proud woman, and an optimistic woman. And no matter her circumstances, she always viewed her experiences, past and present, in the rosiest possible light. In the stories of her voyage to America, she usually sounded more like a movie star or heiress rather than a poor girl traveling alone with nothing. From her example, I've learned many things, but the one that has served me best, especially in my new life in politics, is to laugh at circumstances whenever you can and refuse to let them define you or crush your spirit. My grandmother was a bit of a snob about the fact that she had a sponsor who paid her ticket on third class on the Adriatic. This meant that she did not have to travel in steerage. If any of you saw the movie The Titanic, you remember the scenes of hundreds of Irish immigrants that were crowded into the bowels of the ship. And the Adriatic was also part of the famous White Star Line that included the Titanic. My grandmother used to always tell me, I had a sponsor, don't you know, Kelly? I was not in steerage with the rabble. We had gay dances and parties in third class. My favorite part of her voyage story to America was actually the last night when she was crowned Miss White Star Line. My grandmother was so charming and outgoing that she had befriended all of the employees on the ship. And so the last night the chambermaids all got together and they wanted to make her last night special for this costume ball they were having in third class. And they created an elaborate gown for her by pinning the monogrammed White Star Line napkins all over her dress and created this elaborate headpiece for her, transforming her into Miss White Star Line. She won first prize that night and she loved to tell what an exciting and exhilarating night it was for her. She would tell me everyone was in high spirits because we would be sailing past the Statue of Liberty and landing in America the very next day. It was thrilling to be a young girl and starting my adventures in the greatest country on earth. My entire life there was no one more patriotic than my grandmother. She always celebrated the 4th of July with more enthusiasm than anyone and with all of her flags flying. Listening to her stories as a teenager, I was in awe of her bravery, traveling alone with no way to ever reach her family or even know if she would ever see them again. In fact, she never did see her mother again. But her stories were never sad. 
They were always full of romance, danger, the stuff of novels, and I ate it up. My grandmother was always being pursued by handsome rogues and devils, don't you know? And she'd tell me she had to put a stop to their fresh ways. She was a small woman, just a little bit over five feet tall, and she had to quit school at only 12 years old to go to work. But her work ethic, her faith, and her courage define the character of our great country. She's also a classic New York story, because her first job in New York was as a live-in maid for the founders of the Saks Fifth Avenue stores in New York. And this is where she loved, she developed her love of fashion and home decor, which lasted all of her life. All during my childhood and into my 20s, whenever my grandmother would visit from New York, she would bring me wonderful glittering things that were cast-offs from her wealthy employers in New York. Just the words New York conjured images of glamour and sophistication for me. And her gifts always had great stories behind them since they were cast-offs from her longtime employers, Mrs. Roskin and Mrs. Wertheimer. They were wealthy women of New York, or as my grandmother liked to say with a raised, raised eyebrow, high society. When I was 15, my grandmother gave me a small beaded evening purse, which I prize to this day. It's covered in intricate ivory glass beads and has a crystal button on the clasp. My grandmother loved to make a big production of everything, and I can still remember her pressing that purse into my hands and telling me how special it was. She described her elegant employer, employer, Mrs. Roskin, carrying this fine, fine purse to lots of charity balls and glittering parties in New York. I want you to have it, she told me, because I have a feeling you're going to take it lots of wonderful places where you will be the belle of the ball. I was 15 years old then, and for the first time, my attention shifted from the glamorous ladies of New York and all their fabulous cast-offs to my grandmother and what she did. And I remember asking her what she did for Mrs. Roskin. It had never really occurred to me until then to do that. I was always too dazzled by all the things she was bringing me. I remember she told me, oh, Kelly, I handled all of her affairs. I did everything for her. But most importantly, I was her confidant, her trusted advisor, and her true and constant friend. I nodded, fascinated as always by the dramatic language that my grandmother could bring to even the most mundane conversation. She had a natural flair for language and an elegant way of speaking after working in upper crust households all of her life. But being 15, it didn't really occur to me in that moment that this was a rather unorthodox job description. After my grandparents drove back to New York in their cavernous Oldsmobile, I was proudly showing my mom this beautiful evening purse and going on and on about how exciting my grandmother's life and jobs had been in New York. When I caught a fleeting sadness in my mom's eyes, Kelly, she said quietly, Grandma was Mrs. Roskin's maid. At the time, my teenage self was a little let down. My glamorous grandmother from New York was a maid but now, her story is something that has taught me one of my greatest lessons. That the situation you find yourself in, whether it's your job, or your family situation, or your health, whatever, it doesn't have to define you or how you view yourself. I have no doubt that my grandmother, who worked for Mrs. Roskin for more than 30 years, did become her trusted advisor and her true and constant friend. My grandmother worked very hard, did her job exceedingly well, and she thrived in this country. She took great pride in the fact that she was a trusted and dependable worker who helped support her family of four children through very hard, very difficult times. Yes, she loved glamour and elegance, and yes, she was a maid. She saw no disconnect in that, and thanks to her example, neither do I. The value of doing a job and doing it well is enough in itself. In one of his Palliser novels, Anthony Trollope writes that it is important for a young person entering life to decide whether he or she shall make hats or shoes, but that is not nearly as important as the decision whether to make excellent or mediocre hats or shoes. My grandmother cleaned, tidied, organized, and beautified. She did her job very well, and she did it with uncommon spirit and style. 
She had the ability to take whatever she had, no matter how small, and truly make it shine. There was something utterly compelling and undeniably American about her optimism. She never felt sorry for herself. She usually put on her lipstick, a Max Factor Coral, made a good pot of tea, and had a laugh. Fifteen years after she passed away, I carried her cast-off purse to the White House Christmas party. As I walked into the foyer, my eyes were wide with the beauty and the grandeur of it all, the dozens of sparkling Christmas trees, the Marine Band in their red and gold brocade uniforms, and all those glittering people standing in historic marble hall, smiling. I stood at the entrance and I had to take a deep breath and just look down at my arm and that little beaded purse just shined and I knew that my grandmother was smiling. After all, she had an abiding faith in the possibilities of this country. Her optimism, her belief that with hard work, faith, and a great attitude, anything can happen, those are quintessential American beliefs and they're the legacy of my grandmother, Julia O'Toole. I hope that the stories in my book, this one and others, will remind you of a woman in your life. Rand wrote the foreword to my book, and in it, he shares stories of his grandmothers and how one of them inspired him to become an ophthalmologist. She was so proud when he became a doctor, and I know she would be even more proud of him today. I know I am.